painting, you have to go through the process to get the execution. It's not a case of just, oh, well, I want that. You know, it doesn't work that way. You have to go from beginning, middle, end, and follow that all the way through to get that finished result. I think people, especially new painters, and it's not necessarily their fault because it's a it's a completely logical um, conclusion to come to. Yeah. They value copying someone else's recipe one-to-one. -one. My start in painting is a bit different. I painted just in the back garden as a kid. Like I was chucked out there with some paint. You were chucked out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> Made yeah, you sound yeah. very feral, that description, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> On all fours, yeah. <laughs> brushing his mouth. What are some of the techniques and the mindsets that people should be using in their approach to painting that model to improve their skills? I got told this uh, on my first visit to a games workshop back as an adult. Right, okay. And I wish I actually acknowledged what the person was saying, the, the guy working in the store was saying to me, and I wish I actually um, took it on board, which was... Right then, guys, let's get started with today's topic, which is developing skills as a beginner. And I've titled this one Overcoming Average. So the way I wanted this one to sort of work is for those painters who are in their intermediate sort of phase so you've been painting for a little while you're sort of comfortable with the brush your base coat and your basics but you want to start taking that next step so you're seeing these models on instagram that look incredible you want to start heading on that trajectory to start getting towards that so i want to know what is our biggest tips and maybe more importantly what mindset do you need to take that sort of next step so you're, you're painting your gaming models for your games of your friends you're really really happy with things how how things are but you want to move it on up so it's a good song, that. <laughs> um, I think for I have a couple of like really quick ones that I wish that I did early on. Um, and I think one of them, not everyone's gonna like this one. This could have been in this could have been my hot take. Um one of them is I would get away from Space Marines as early as you feel comfortable doing, or even earlier if possible, because because from experience, I obviously started with painting space. Marines. I started with painting space marines Isn't when that, I was. Is that not a requirement? Don't you have to start I painting started, space marines? <laughs> I started with painting space marines when I was like eight or whatever, uh, and then when I came back to it, I started with space marines again, um, and I stuck with space marines, painting marines for ages. And even when I got to a point where I was quite happy with my painting, I was quite happy with how my marines were were turning out. Um, as soon as I went to paint another model, I felt like I was painting my first model again. And I really wish that while I was getting started and I painted, painted Marines, um, I chucked like, even, I'm not even saying it has to be drastically different. It doesn't even have to be like something without armor panels. I'm talking about if I, I went from having like Marines in front of me to then going to paint like an Eldar or a Tau or something. I, it felt completely foreign to me just because it's like it's smaller. The panels are different. You get this muscle memory when you're only painting Marines when you start. Well, I think that's not just Marines. That's obviously going to be whatever your first army choice is. Whatever you start with, I guess. But I, I do think specifically, I, I'm basing it specifically on Marines because most people start with Marines. I started with Marines. So that's my experience with it. And I do think potentially if you start with a different one, you might find yourself being able to translate just by nature of the fact of there's sort of more variety of textures exactly, and materials. Yeah, whereas marines are, are very specific and mostly one thing. Uh, and I think you can get comfortable with that and you can get comfortable with where all the edges lie on a marine. Um, translating that over to something else, even when once you're happy with your painting, was a, it was a big shock to me because I'd never thought of it before. And then all of a sudden I had like another model in front of me that wasn't a Marine for the first time. And I was like, oh, this feels really weird again. Um, so yeah, I would definitely, that would be my first bit of advice. I think I would have benefited from that quite a lot. Yeah, yeah no, I, I can see that. I think one of the things is, a lot of people start with Marines because they are the poster boys for a lot of, a lot of uh, famous artworks, box arts, things like that. I think they're very good to start learning to paint though. I think because they're very linear in the way that you have to paint them um, because the, the way they are, it does help develop those initial fundamental core competencies of painting. I think you do need to then go and transition to painting other miniatures. But on the other side of it, you sh you're quite right. You know, I, I know a few people that started with orcs. I know a few people that started with, uh, with Eldar and, and, and Elder Marines are quite similar in the sense of the overall things that are on the models. 
Um, but I think even that, like the size difference, even back in the day, that there was a bit of a size difference because they're they're way more, they're elder, way slimmer. That's yeah. the crazy thing about commission painting is like you're instantly exposed to all of this new stuff. And I remember like the first time I got some of these armies because I, I I don't game, so I'd never actually really seen them on the table or anything. And I remember getting like my first elder projects, and I'm like, Jesus, these models are tiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the, the elder range is 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 one of the oldest ranges as well. So that they're, they're you know obviously we've had quite a few new models like banshees and things like that. But yeah, a lot of the older models still still are in use, which is you know uh, testament not only to the skulls but at the same time just obviously the the, the quality of the sort of the faction and stuff. But um, but yeah, you're right. They are a bit smaller. Um, I think they do incorporate more things like materials. Not every marine has got a loincloth or a tabard or things like that. So you don't always get like a, a 10 man squad of intercessors or marines you don't necessarily always have that skin so, as well people shy away skin, from yeah you know um i, I think uh, I, I don't know i think one of the things is that, that uh, my, my start in painting is a bit different i painted just in the back garden as a kid like i was chucked out there with some paints and some blank blank wallpaper to just paint stuff but um in the back garden but like miniatures I that you were chucked out there <laughs> well <laughs> made yeah, you sound yeah. very feral that description yeah. didn't it <laughs> uh, yeah rather, rather than just on all fours yeah. <laughs> brush in his mouth yeah i was not chucked out in the garden fine uh, but but i so i i started with airfix kits and things like that so so i think because i started on those things i was really used to different shapes and different materials mm. and different finishes and things like that but when it came to 40k yeah like i i had a mixed bag of marines some epic stuff and bits and bobs but i think you're quite right i think you know one of the things that for, for anybody who's in that kind of intermediate kind of like they get good armies on the table for gaming but do want to push themselves i think we all strongly advocate it is is to to try painting new things like i'd even advocate jumping game systems so you know uh if you've been playing 40k all the time jump in and, and play and pick up like an age of sigma character or pick up like a necromunda model or pick up like a, a, any other manufacturer model that you like the look of great great things for that are the uh like the underworlds boxes yeah they're brilliant yeah because, they really are you know it's a one it's a, a one purchase thing you can then play a game with it once you're done with it and all the individual models in there do have some variety you can get some of those teams that are like the um the models are so different from each other. Some of them are fairly, you know, crabby, similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, or the, or the <laughs> monkey with a knife on the tail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you you can go. Oh, there was a new one um, that had like uh, Stormcast was one of them, which they all looked fairly similar. And then it was like Zinch, Zinch Demons, yeah, Zinch Demons, and yeah. they were all fairly individual. Yeah, yeah, they are. So like they're they're a pretty cool little palette cleanser. I hadn't thought of that. That's a really that's a really they're good brilliant. They're, they're brilliant little sets and 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 like you said, Joe, they they're they're really good to just give you a variation of different things to actually to mm. actually paint. There's kind uh, of no commitment with that as well, because it's not like oh you should go out and buy your second army no. and start getting a better painter. It's like just buy this one box and it's got such a variety in it. Rather than having to buy like a handful of different boxes just to paint one different model, you've got this like one set and there's like a variety of things in there. And it's mm. quite a nice size as well as any sort of what five six models in those boxes usually that's like that. the high end of yeah. some of them have got some of the some of those like i don't know what the official term in that game is like war bands or whatever but oh, yeah. like, but some of them have like three models yeah you know what i mean so yeah i think one thing that, that you also if you have got a painting demographic or if you have got uh, a group of friends where you do all paint different armies and you've been collecting for x amount of years each or whatever um just just swapping a model with one of your mates and just saying look I, I've, I've been painting marines for 10 years or i've been painting eldar for 10 years or can i have you got like an orc kicking about that i can just you know that you don't want i could just paint you know i think that's also a good thing like um we've we've spoken in other episodes about doing like a painting week versus a gaming week or, or alternating it or whatever but like even doing that having it having a a, a a night where you all just bring a random spare model um and just and just swap the models and go yeah i'll paint this for tonight or paint. that that also helps you as well because the thing is you can sit there with your friend who's painted orcs for 10 years and go oh how do i how do i approach the skin in the best way or how do i approach doing the cloth in the best way or you know oh i've never painted power armor before what's the best way to edge highlight it, this part of it or something like that i think all of that would help as well massively to just push you on so what's something that like say you've got those models in front of you and like you've you've been doing the like i said you, you are a beginner coming up coming a <clears throat> far beginner coming into this yeah and you've, you've taken that step, you bought the next box or whatever. When you sit down to paint that model and you're going, right, I want to really start improving my skills. Fundamentally speaking, right? So aside from the fact of you've now got different textures and things in front of you. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the techniques and the mindsets that people should be using in their approach to painting that model to improve their skills? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I yeah. think we're probably both about to say the same thing. Because yeah, I was uh, going to, you know, you've you've already said it on other podcasts and stuff like that. Is that the big go to is the brush control? Definitely, yeah. Thing, right? Yeah, definitely. So, brush control is is. I think it is 
like when building a house or building a building, the foundations are the most important thing to keep everything above uh, in shape. Uh, brush control, pressure management, um, they are core competency fundamental things that as a painter, you should master before tackling things that are perceived or seen as more difficult. Um, a, a good painter should have that strength of ability where being able to paint small, sharp, intricate little lines, little dots, being able to push the, the pigmentation and deposit it where they need it to, um, understanding that one brush can do multiple shapes, you know, depending on the pressure positioning and allocation as you're using the brush. All those things are integral to becoming a better painter and they are literally the building blocks of everything above that techniques, uh, layering, blending, uh, all, all those things come from that, that thing. It is literally the implement that you place that paint on the miniature. So not honing and mastering that part of your painting as a painter and just focusing on this technique or I've got to learn how to do blending or I've got to learn how to do dry brush or I've got to learn how to do this. Um, it's it's looking at the goal without the, the, the path to it, if you mm. follow me, you know. I think um, the other the other side of that is also what's really important is the the goals thing that we, we mention all the time. Yeah. Um because it's all context, I guess. Like, we can tell you what you should focus on to get past being average and get to that next step. But what is your actual goal? Because if you're if you're trying to get an army painted because you really want a game, yeah. then us telling you, you know, buy a buy a box of ten models and treat every model like it's a character to improve yeah. isn't going to help you. No, no, no. But if it's if if it's you really want to improve your your painting, then then that's a really good thing that I've heard from like you and other painters before where it's like buy your standard infantry box, get your, get your uh, 10 models and work on each one of them individually and get feedback on each one and then yeah. attribute that feedback to the next model. I mean, my favorite thing that I done, and this was like the, the light bulb moment for me that I spoke about on a previous episode was the thing that really put a rocket booster on my skill as a painter was studying other people's work and i don't just mean like scrolling through instagram and getting inspiration i mean i found a model that i really really liked i got the really high resolution photos that, that had been published for that model and i got them up on my computer and i blew them up and i really really zoomed in and i really like took some time i mean like you know 20 30 minutes literally just sitting there taking notes and going you know right they've, so they've done a chunky highlight here and a thin highlight and then they've also done a corner highlight and then they've done a dot on top of that really zooming in and looking at all the different colors looking at okay on the leather here they've done some tiny little really really fine scratches and it's little things that when you're painting you don't really necessarily want to do because it seems like a bit of a waste of time because it's not very noticeable when you start doing like 20 or 30 tiny little things just to push a model it all adds up though it all completely adds up yeah. and I, I think that a really great thing to, to do for if you are a beginner is find a model that you like and you're like oh i really want to paint like that okay so actually try like odds are speaking from experience it's not going to be as good as the one the original correct, of course yeah. but yeah. You're going to learn so much in that process because what you're going to do is you're going to stop painting with your mindset and you're going to start painting with the mindset of that person that painted that model because they're going to approach it in a completely different way to you. And if you're forced to copy their style, then you're going to have to start incorporating some of their techniques or their mindset into how they painted that model into your painting. Yeah. So you're going to analyze how they've highlighted the model. You're going to look at the color choices, especially, and how they've highlighted things. And you, you're going to, and, and down to the techniques as well. So, okay, they've glazed the shadows in rather than doing it wet blending. Like if you're advanced enough to, to be able to pick up on those techniques just from looking at a photo. But I think uh, regardless of if you can do that or not, just looking at an image and really spending the time. Breaking it down. Breaking it down and analyzing yeah. it and going, right, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to try and copy it as close as I can. Maybe the colors aren't going to be perfect one-to-one because -one you don't know what recipe they've used, whatever. But it, it's the mindset uh, of doing that, I think is really, really beneficial for someone. Yeah, I, I mean, something else that I, I'd also say as well that, that I've noted from classes, I've noted from just uh, doing tuition or speaking to people just, you know, in general about painting is also uh, things that are real, like real life reference. Um, uh, uh, a lot of people disregard real life reference. Like Google Images should be your, like your best friend. Like if you're, if you're looking to paint scales on a, on a, on a, on a lizardman skink or if you're looking to paint... Um, Tyranids are a bit of a funny one because obviously they're not real, thank God. But but like <laughs> but um but but like you can look at you can look at alligators, you can look at snakes. also the artwork. Yeah, there's the artwork also as well. That's as close to real life reference as you're ever going to sure. get. Um, but I think it's well, there's still like sci-fi films that have like practical effects, maybe yeah, and stuff correct. like that yeah, that yeah. you can look at and how that was how that looks on camera and yeah, yeah. where things are lit. And yeah, stuff like def that. definitely. And and it is one of the most important things. Reference, like you know, you you shouldn't 
be so linear in mindset of I need to paint this and then not think about the steps or the process of how to get there. That real life reference, like you said about breaking down the image that someone, uh, uh, you know, images of other people's painting, um, even looking at things and going, well, uh, you know, they've, they've used this color, they've used this color, they've used this color, the highlight looks like this color. And then just getting those colors and trying to do that exact same thing. Like you said, you're not, you might not get the execution hundred percent exactly the same as that other person. But what you will get is something there or thereabouts or 50% or 60% or whatever, depending on your skill ability or control with a brush, that is going to give you the building blocks to reach that point. Um, I always say this, it's like, you know, miniature painting is, is, is there's no Amazon, you know, in that sense of no instant, it doesn't happen instantly, you know? Um, and it's very, you know, with painting, you have to go through the process to get the execution. It's not a case of just, oh, well, I want that. You know, it doesn't work that way. You have to go from beginning, middle, end, and follow that all the way through to get that finished result. The finished result, depending on how good it is, is totally dependent on all those things that you do as a as a precursor to looking at it once you've done it. Um, and I think that's one of the really important things that that because we are so busy, we do often overlook. You know, um, so yeah. yeah, I think there's there's something that that George touched on actually, and I'm you almost glossed over it as if it wasn't important, and I'm so glad you did because my point is that it isn't important. Is that I, one thing I wish I learned, I got told this uh, on my first visit to a games workshop back as an adult. Right. Okay. And I wish I actually acknowledged what the person was saying, the, the guy working in the store was saying to me. And I wish I actually um, took it on board, which was I was trying, I was asking him what colors were used on the box. Yeah. And I, I, I was saying like, because I bought like one of those multi-pack paint sets where you get oh, like tiny ones. little pots of paint yeah, yeah. And, and it was just to start out, right? And I was saying to him like, oh, but it says this green and in this box it has this green. And he was like, it doesn't matter, it's green. Like it, yeah. you can you can use, you know, you've got other colors in there so you can mix your, you know, your brown with your green. If, your, even if you don't want to mix it, like it can be a slightly different green here. It can be a slightly different green, right? He was like, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't need to be the same green. Yeah. And, and, I don't know why I didn't take that on board as an important thing because it's so true. And that is why I I think people, especially new painters, and it's not necessarily their fault because it's a it's a completely logical um conclusion to come to. Yeah. They value copying someone else's recipe one to one way more. They think knowing someone's recipe on, on something means it's it gonna skill. it's gonna improve their painting. Yeah, yeah. We could tell you the recipe of one of our platinum jobs, for example. You might not be able to utilize no, no. it in the exact same way that it was utilized on that model. It might not give you the same results. Yeah. The actual recipe isn't really that important. It is important to get if you want an exact look and and you want to maybe get a general thing. But oftentimes you can look at a color and you can work out why do you want to mirror that? What do you like about that? And then look at what you've got at your disposal. Yeah, yeah. Um, mixing colors, I know everyone's not that comfortable with it because you can't get guaranteed results every time, uh, you know, matching and consistency and stuff, unless you make big batches. But like, I just, I just think a lot of new artists, and I was guilty of it, and even though I got told not to, I think they value copying a recipe yeah. as something that's going to improve their painting. And it just isn't. I On that think. note, that ties into a bit of a pet peeve I have, which I've also been guilty of, is spending, uh, where a lot of that comes from is like people might see a tutorial and they're like, okay, yeah, I use these colors to, to get mm. this look. And then your first thought isn't, okay, I'm going to try this. It's, okay, well, I need to buy those paints yeah. before I can even start. And you've yeah. like immediately put this barrier up. And it's like, yeah. if you use like Mephisto Red instead of Evil Sun's Red, and then you highlighted it. It's like the fact the difference isn't going to be that much. It's it's not about the color. It's the fact of you're doing it with the correct mindset of you're highlighting it. You're taking a step up, correct. and then this is the technique you're going to use, like the edge highlighting, something yeah. like that. And I think that as well, that kind of ties into people spend. I think as well, again, saying me too. Like I've been there. That's why I'm saying this is you spend way too much time watching tutorials rather than actually doing it. Yeah, yeah. it's, what, it's I, I, on a weird off tangent. It's why I like. I like watching cookery programs. Like, you know, I know it sounds really silly, right? but hear me out when I say this. Oh, we're doing, they'll we're put, doing Tupperware the other week. Put, <laughs> now we got like, I'm trying to fill the kitchen, all right? Like Jella Lawson <laughs> but, this week. But the, the, you watch a cookery program and the contestants will have exactly the same amount of ingredients, exact amount of weights, exact amount of everything, but they will all use them in very different ways. And the, the amount, the way they actually cook the, the end thing, the results do end up arguably similar when they finish on, on the plate, but they're all, incrementally very different from each other and mm. that's exactly the same with miniature painting like you could get given you could give 
10 painters, the exact same paints, the exact same 20 paints or 30 paints, whatever, and a recipe and process. And I guarantee you, you will not get 20 or 30 miniatures that are all exactly the same. That's the thing as well. Is like Absolutely. Even if you used the same, even if you gave them the, gave them the same colors to use, Someone might use the airbrush. Someone might do wet blending yeah. with it. Someone might do like heavy metal stuff. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. Someone, someone might mix them. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's the other thing. A straight up list of a recipe doesn't give you is the mixes that we used in between and and things it's, like that. It's all the subtle nuances. Even even when you get told two to one this or whatever, it's never going to be exactly the same. So you might as well just get comfortable with the fact that it's not going to be exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. And I think also I'm a big advocate of like when it comes to art. I think. A lot of the best art just in general is potentially created when you're trying to copy someone else and you get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. And you get your unique thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think you potentially end up with something that's not necessarily even better, but it's yours. It's unique. Um, you might, you've started at the same place, but it's not a direct copy. Do you think then that like forming your own style is something that happens sort of naturally over time or can people sort of uh, consciously try and develop their own? How can someone develop their own style? It's a very difficult one, I think, because if like, uh, like I can I take my experience, which I, I grew up copying box art, as you know, you know, so like my, but the way I paint it, it when you look at it at a, a molecular, not molecular, but when you look at it at a very, very refined thing, there's no way in, mine is totally different in some respects in the way that I, like, that I maybe a highlight or a layer or do bits and bobs. That's or, exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. though, right? You started copying box art. And you've made these subtle changes where you've done things differently, either subconsciously or accidentally or whatever. And you've ended up with your, what you like to do, your yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I'm and I just want to say, I'm not advocating that my painting is anywhere near close to as good as box art, but I'm just pretty saying I've, I've co I copied, I copied as much as I could to get me to the point that I am, but I've layered over it my own experiences and my own, I'm doing it this way or I'm going to add this to it or just boost this color slightly or do this this way, you know, and I think they're the nuances that you should develop as a painter individually for yourself. You know, you should. You Which know? you know what's funny is like I, I also paint in a box art style, but I kind of done that. I kind of done that uh, on accident. So that was like, like I said, I, I tried copying someone else's work. So I didn't start out box art style. I was very airbrushy, um, you know, that sort of thing. And then, like I said, I, I saw someone's box art model and I really, really wanted to copy it. Going back to what I said a moment ago. And then that's now become my style it's because like, I enjoy correct. painting yeah. like that so much. <laughs> but the yeah. thing is, I think that's the other thing as well. Is like, you're like, uh, I don't think you should restrict yourself to one 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 style. Like being able to paint in box art style in in miniature painting is a great thing. I think it teaches uh, a smoothness, accuracy, skill, all those things, like refinement. I think all those things. But then being able to 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 blend a whole entire model or being able to airbrush a model and do a lot of the gradients and, and, and tonal variants with, the, with an airbrush i think you, if all styles are like a tool in a toolbox you should be able to use them in different ways yeah. to get different if you results can be, if you could be like at a good enough level at all of them then you're laughing really, well yeah you? because then you can, approach you can still models. focus on the one that you would consider your style correct yeah 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 but yeah, definitely yeah yeah Okay, so let's do our new segment, which is our favorite question of the week. So we've got an interesting one uh, this week, which is actually I'll put a bit of a spin on, on what the, uh, the person commented here. So I hope you won't mind that. I'm asking, what is your second favorite faction to paint? So the original of this was what's your first favorite faction, but I think that's a bit obvious. So I want to ask, <laughs> what's your second favorite faction? And importantly, why do you enjoy painting it? I think the only one that is obvious is your, is yeah, James's yeah, one. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will reframe from mentioning anything to do with them at all whatsoever. I think it, I think it completely, <laughs> it completely undermines the question if we even acknowledge yeah, what they, not, what, not. what your favorite is. So They're let's, red. Not, um, let's uh, not say. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Farsight Tau, your favorite, mini, really. Mini, mini Wargame, that's a good point. Mini Wargame, <laughs> Dave's going to hate me for this one, but I'm going to say Tau. Um, I'm going to say Tau. As your second Yeah, yeah, favorite. definitely. Yeah, I think wow. um, I, I painted that purple and orange Dark Strider and I had so much fun painting it. Um, and I actually think for practicing precision and accuracy, I think Tau are better models because there's so many straight lines on them as a, as a model. Like if you look at the suits, if you look at their like shoulder armor panels, if you look at, if you thought you had a lot of edge highlighting on Space Marines, try painting some Tau. Yeah, I think, I think, I honestly think that like as a step up from Marines as in to try and paint a super refined, clean, accurate, precise miniature, I think Tau is the way to go. And I really enjoyed painting that Dark Stride. I think I... I had to approach edge highlighting with even more focus and concentration on that model because of how 
particular that the edges are on on tower models because of the shape of the armor panels and the suits and the things they've got so many straight edges on them it's 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 crazy um so i actually really enjoy painting tower and i'd say they're probably my favorite second is my favorite second faction don't hate me dave um <laughs> but um but uh but yeah um I, that's probably what i would say yeah mine um well, i am painting my second orc ever at the moment and i think that is the paint after painting the first one it's it's instantly become like oh actually no that's a lie because i did a, a blood bowl you did team do a blood bowl, of, yeah. of orcs yeah but i didn't exactly I, they, that was more of like a getting them ready for the tabletop thing but yeah, while yeah. i was doing those actually i realized that like oh okay yeah this is uh i'm actually really enjoying this and it's a bit of a break from like fun. what i would normally paint um and I think you know you you asked me in a few months after I've painted a few more they might they might take the top spot because I think I'm really enjoying how <laughs> I'm really enjoying how they have armor panels and stuff like that yeah yeah so they have the opportunity to do those those straight lines straight edges but they also have a lot of exposed like flesh flesh yeah yeah and and getting to do some gradients and glazing and stuff on the on the like muscles and things um and just really interesting faces yeah i do the faces like, are great the faces paint. are really interesting and not tiny yeah. like so they're, they're they're quite handy so i think yeah, yeah. i'm really enjoying orcs at the minute funny yeah. enough my answer is going to overlap a lot with yours joe because we, we believe it or not we did not discuss this beforehand but my second favorite is also orcs really Ooh. and are you painting orc at the minute no so <laughs> where does that come from i i this might be controversial i really didn't like orcs like right. I, it's just not my not that I thought the models were bad, not at all. I thought that was cool, but like it's not my aesthetic, mm. and I really wasn't into it. And then I got a commission, <laughs> which is yeah. how these things often start, and it was a big orc army. And uh, I thought that might turn you off. <laughs> no, turn you off painting orcs. Do you know what? Honestly, like I thought the same. Like when I, when I saw when I saw that come through, I was like, oh god, orcs. I don't. So it's fairly really like sizable if we're thinking. Yeah, of it was. Yeah, but I size. I had so, painting green skin was so much fun, and those yeah, models. I enjoyed. I already it. thought the models were cool. And like like we said, this is kind of the fun thing about like uh, picking up a, a random box or you know doing commissions, whatever. It forces you to paint things uh, outside your comfort zone. outside your comfort zone. And it, it wasn't that I was like un underprepared for painting those models, but it was I had I just hadn't done it before, and I just painting that much skin, but it was a different color and like something so simple like that. And like Joe said, there's there's a lot of armor panels, so it's a lot of like familiarity with with the other stuff that you paint, you know, yeah. especially with the vehicles and things like that. But they're just so much fun. I, got, yeah. I, I do. If I had a, another choice, I would say the same. And I think the reason for that is because you're quite right. They have so much flexibility to what you can do with them. When you then overlap that with all the, the clans, the colors, uh, the little freehand symbols and things you can do on there, like weathering, because they don't care about the equipment, all that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot loads, of opportunities. A lot of opportunities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 A lot like of personally, well. I don't gel with the like comedic sort of side of things. I like to do them a bit more like. Uh, I think you need that in 40K with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I much prefer that as well. Like a. Uh, um, I get the humor behind orcs and stuff and the the Cockney hooligan accents and stuff like that. Like I completely, and I was I'm tempted to throw a few like football references into there. But, um, but mostly, yeah, I do like the idea of them being these like big, huge, mean, terrifying things. Yeah. Um, so like you said as well, it's like the details are just that much, like they're not big models, but they're just, because they're so like, such like hefty guys, yeah. like, the, the volumes on them are really interesting. They have really interesting like facial expressions. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And there's lots of details on the face. One thing I found really cool was, like I said, studying other people's work was on face value, I just took it as like orc skin, okay, green. But then when you look at some of these really amazingly painted models, when you look at their faces yeah, yeah. and you look at like around their lips, like around their eyes, it's like these kind of like fleshy tones coming like yeah. around their ears. Like they and go the elbows, pink. you get it a lot. With yeah, the elbows and the knuckles. Orcs. And there's such subtle little things. Also just the, the, the base green that you use uh, varies from every, like, so differently between everyone you get like people using a more yellowy green you get people going flat green and pale just, green just and... as a quick one i honestly think orcs as much as yes they are green or whatever i think that when you have a squad that has all different hues of green or some brown mm. tones or some blue tones i think yeah that also works really well yeah cool thanks everyone for listening to paint perspective this has been a really really fun episode for us hopefully it was uh, insightful and helpful for you all please feel free to share with your friends and you can listen now on uh, apple spotify all those places so thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.